Now let's work on some verifying the identity problems with double angle formulas. So show that sine plus cosine squared is equal to sine 2 theta plus 1. Now the first thing we need to do in this example is write this expression twice. Sine theta plus cosine theta squared is sine plus cosine times sine plus cosine. Sine times sine is sine squared. And then sine times cosine, that's positive sine theta cosine theta. And then below that we have cosine times sine, which is also sine theta plus cosine theta. I mean sine theta times cosine theta. And then cosine times cosine is just cosine squared. Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. And then these two, sine cosine plus sine cosine, adds up to 2 sine theta cosine theta. Now here we have a double angle formula. Sine 2 theta is 2 sine cosine. So now we've just verified the identity. The left side is the same as the right side. 1 plus sine 2 theta is equivalent to sine 2 theta plus 1. Here's one you could try. Sine 2 theta show that this is equal to 2 tangent theta divided by 1 plus tangent squared theta. So take a minute and work on this example. Sine 2 theta, we can use the double angle formula and convert it to 2 sine theta cosine theta. If we look at all the angles of tangent, it's theta. And here this is 2 theta. So you got to make sure the angles are the same first. So by using the double angle formula, we can take a 2 theta angle and break it down to theta. Now let's focus on the left side. So the right side is going to remain the same. I'm going to write this as 2 sine theta over 1. And I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 1 over cosine squared. So what I now have is 2 sine theta cosine theta and 1 over cosine squared. I'm going to write it as 1 over cosine theta times cosine theta. On the bottom, I just have 1 over cosine squared theta. One of the cosines will cancel, leaving behind one left over, which I'm going to put under sine. So in the numerator, I now have 2 sine theta divided by cosine theta. And on the bottom, I still have 1 over cosine squared. Sine theta divided by cosine theta is equal to what? Using the quotient identity, sine over cosine is tangent. And 1 over cosine squared is secant squared. And if you recall, secant squared is 1 plus tangent squared. That's one of the Pythagorean identities that you need to keep in mind. So now, we just showed how the left side is the same as the right side. So we've verified the identity. Let's show that 1 minus tan squared is equal to cosine 2x divided by cosine squared x. So how should we begin this problem? How can we take the expression on the left side and make it look like the one on the right side? Well, for one thing, we know that tangent is sine over cosine. So tan squared is sine squared divided by cosine squared. So notice that we have a cosine squared on the bottom, which is what we want if we look at the right side. So we don't want to change the cosine squared. Now what we can do is multiply 1 by cosine squared over cosine squared. Cosine squared divided by cosine squared is 1. And the purpose for doing this is to get common denominators. As you can see, we have two terms on the left and only one term on the right. 
So to go from a two-term expression to a one-term expression, we need to combine the two fractions into a single fraction. So to do that, it's going to be cosine squared minus sine squared, all divided by the common denominator of cosine squared. Now, do you recognize this expression? Cosine squared minus sine squared is a double angle formula for cosine. It's cosine 2x. So now, the left side appears just the same as the right side. So we verify the identity. Go ahead and show that cosine 4x is equal to 8 cosine to the fourth power of x minus 8 cosine squared plus 1. So go ahead and work on this example. Now there are some special formulas for cosine you need to be aware of. You know the first one. Cosine 2 theta is equal to cosine squared minus sine squared. So this is the double angle formula, but there's three versions. For instance, cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. So therefore, cosine 2 theta is also equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So this is the first form that you want to be familiar with. And here is the second form. Now going back from the first form, we can replace sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared. So we'll have cosine squared minus 1 minus cosine squared. And so that's going to be cosine squared minus 1 plus cosine squared. And so we'll get the other version of the double angle formula, which is 2 cosine squared minus 1. Now you want to be familiar with these three forms. So if we look at the right, everything is in terms of cosine. So we're going to use this form of the double angle formula of cosine in this particular example. Now looking at this angle, we need to bring it down from 4x to 1x. So you should always use the double angle formula if you want to reduce the angle from a large angle to a small angle, anytime you want to cut it by half or even more. Now we know that cosine 2 theta is 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. Now what about cosine 4 theta? Well if we double 2 theta to 4 theta, we should double theta to 2 theta. So cosine 4 theta is 2 cosine squared 2 theta minus 1. And so you can keep reducing the angle by half using the double angle formula of cosine. So let's replace cosine 4x with this expression in terms of x. So I'm going to put it here. So on the left side, we now have 2 cosine squared 2x minus 1. I'm going to rewrite that expression. So I'm going to rewrite it like this. 2 cosine 2x. And the cosine is squared, but I'm going to put the squared on the outside. Minus 1. Now the reason why I wrote it that way is because I'm going to use a double angle formula again. I'm going to replace cosine 2x with 2 cosine squared x minus 1. So the first time you use a double angle formula, 4x gets reduced to 2x. But you need to do it again to bring 2x down to 1x. So this is going to be 2 cosine squared theta, actually 2 cosine squared x, minus 1 squared minus 1. Now this expression, we need to FOIL it. So we have 2 times 2 cosine squared x minus 1 times another. 2 cosine squared x minus 1, minus 1 on the outside. Now let's FOIL. 2 cosine squared times 2 cosine squared, that's 4 cosine to the fourth of x. We still have a 2 on the outside. And then 2 cosine squared times negative 1, that's negative 2 cosine squared. And then here we have negative 1 times 2 cosine squared. So that's going to be the same thing. And then negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1. Next, 
Let's combine like terms. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Next, let's distribute 2 to every term that we see here. So 2 times 4, that's going to be 8. And 2 times negative 4, that's negative 8. And then we have 2 times positive 1, which is positive 2. And we also have the negative 1 on the outside. Now the last thing that we need to do is combine these two, 2 minus 1. So our final answer is 8 cosine to the fourth power of x minus 8 cosine squared, and 2 minus 1 is positive 1. And now the left side is the same as the right side. So that's how you can use double angle formulas to verify identities. So anytime you want to bring an angle down, let's say from 4x to 2x to 1x, use the double angle formula. So if you want to bring it down from 2x to 1x, use it once. If you want to bring it down from 4x to 1x, you have to use it twice. 4x to 2x, and then 2x to 1x. So if you want to bring it down from 8x to 1x, you need to use it three times. From 8x to 4x, that's the first time. 4x to 2x, that's the second time. And then 2x to 1x, that's the third time. Here's another one that we could try. Let's show that cosine of 3x is equal to 4 cosine cube x minus 3 cosine x. So how can we prove that this equation is indeed true? Well, let's use this formula. By the way, if you have an odd number, you can't use the double angle formula directly. Otherwise, you'll get 1.5x. If you have an even number like 4x or 8x, then you could use the double angle formula for cosine. But if it's odd, you want to use the sum and difference formula for cosine. Cosine alpha plus beta is cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. So 3x, we could say, is 2x plus x. So therefore, alpha is represented by 2x, and beta is represented by x. So then this becomes cosine of 2x multiplied by cosine of x minus sine of 2x times sine of x. So all of that is equal to the original expression, cosine 3x. Now, cosine 2x, we can use the double angle formula. Our goal is to convert all angles into x. So cosine 2x, it's equal to 2 cosine squared x minus 1. So that's one version of the double angle formula for cosine. We want to use that form because everything on the right is in terms of cosine. So every sine expression that we see, we need to convert it to cosine. Now let's get back to where we left off. So these two are the same expression. So let's multiply 2 cosine squared minus 1 by cosine x. Now sine 2x, that's a double angle formula. That's equal to 2 sine x cosine x. And we have another sine x attached to it. So at this point, let's go ahead and distribute cosine to 2 cosine squared. So that's going to be 2 cosine cube x, and then cosine x times negative 1, that's negative cosine x. And then sine times sine is sine squared, so this is going to be negative 2 cosine x multiplied by sine squared x. Now we can convert sine squared into a cosine squared. If sine squared plus cosine squared is 1, then sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. So what we now have is 2 cosine cubed x minus cosine x minus 2 cosine x and let's replace sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared. So on the left we're just going to rewrite what we have. Now let's distribute negative 2 cosine x to 1 and so that's negative 2 cosine x and then negative 2 cosine x times negative cosine squared that's positive 2 cosine cube x. Now let's combine these two expressions. 
2 cosine cubed plus 2 cosine cubed, that's 4 cosine cubed. And negative cosine x minus 2 cosine x, negative 1 minus 2 is 3. So we get negative 3 cosine x. And that's how you can verify the identity for this particular example.